Auburn Tigers talk right here at the Voice of College Football. We appreciate Kyle Loomis stopping by on a regular basis from E2C Network. It's your destination right here on YouTube for Auburn football talk. The entire Auburn community, though, covered there. So everything Auburn, check it out. E2C Network right here on YouTube. Kyle, appreciate you breaking things down for us. We'll start with this quarterback position. Peyton Thorne transfers in from Michigan State. I got to think that most of college football saw that as a here is Auburn starting quarterback for 2023 automatically coming in from Michigan State because he has started two seasons in East Lansing. He led the team to a top 10 finish, 11 wins and a Peach Bowl victory. But that's not necessarily cut and dry and set in stone. Absolutely, it is not. As we know, during talking season, the talking gets happening. There's already discussions today amongst some other Auburn uh, media members that Robbie Ashford is the going favorite to win it at this point. Now, that's just one you know person or group's opinion, and I don't necessarily disagree with it. I think this thing is wide open as it can be right now. I agree with the narrative that Peyton Thorne, you look at his experience, um, you know, his age as well, I, I, that goes along with the experience, is probably really something that you look towards in a rebuild year for Auburn. That's something that would be beneficial. But you cannot argue also the experience that Robbie Ashford has in the SEC. Now, it wasn't super successful, and that a lot of that was not his fault. Um, but also that experience with being part of this program, knowing a lot of these players that hung around, getting to know the one, the new ones that have been coming in um, a little bit longer than Peyton Thorne has. And I really think this thing could be an interesting quarterback battle. I, I think if you're a betting person, you probably still put your hat in the corner of a, uh, a Peyton Thorne just because that feels like the safe thing to do. But I am very intrigued uh, by this Robbie Ashford and Peyton Thorne quarterback battle. And let's not even, you know, dismiss Holden Gariner from this discussion. I think most of us all recognize that he has not had the most opportunities yet to show what he can do doing game time, but he's part of this equation too. And we'll see what happens when we get into fall camp, uh, but do not dismiss Robbie Ashford and don't dismiss Peyton Thorne. If you start hearing it go the other direction, I, I thought we were going to have a boring, you know, fall when it came. Might actually have a little bit of a quarterback battle. Thorne is a mobile quarterback, but make no mistake about it, that box is checked in Ashford's column in regards to dynamic playmaking ability. You know, he was the second leading rusher on the team, uh, over 700 yards, and you got to factor in the sack yardage, hurting his average per yep. carry in seven touchdowns. But well, what you're telling me about what could be the reality of the situation and Ashford with a slight edge at this point speaks to me volumes in regards to what could be his uh, development in the passing category, because he threw for less than 50%, seven touchdowns, seven picks. Of course, that's also a byproduct of the performance of the players around him, as opposed to Peyton Thorne, who has thrown 20 and 25 touchdown range uh, in the big 10. So Ashford versus Thorne will be tracking throughout August camp, of course. Yes, obviously that's going to be the hot topic. Everybody wants to have a quarterback battle, unless you've got somebody solidified. And this is very much not the case of, you know, Auburn's got a Bo Nix, and that's clearly who it is. N- nobody has securely named themselves as the starter yet. And, you know, I like what we have here because the reality is both of these guys have had some injury history, and you're going to need both of these guys ready to step up. So if one is named the starter, that doesn't mean you're going to or you're not going to see the other utilized a lot. In fact, I would almost guarantee that you're going to see them both utilized a lot out there on the field, especially in the instance of if what was the conventional thinking, Peyton Thorne wins the starting job, an athlete like Robbie Ashford, you are stupid if you keep him on the sideline and don't find a way to utilize him in any portion of this offense. So the quarterback battle is wide open, but, I also think that we're going to be seeing both of these guys a lot this season. Tank Bigsby uh, concludes a stellar career at Auburn. Could have been even more prolific with a little bit more help up front. Gained almost 1,000 yards this past season with 10 touchdowns, 30 catches out of the backfield. So this is uh, supremely uh, Jarquez Hunter's Mm -hmm. team from a running standpoint. Uh, Outline his 
uh, skill set and then also what kind of support he's going to get in the backfield? It's hard to outline his skill set because he's got so much of it. He is a guy with a lot of power. He's got a lot of speed. And he's definitely showed his athleticism in the two years that he's been here at Auburn. So he is pretty much what you need is a total package running back. I would say that he's not doesn't fit into one category. And I think that's what makes him such an exciting and dynamic player for Auburn. And you understand why with Tank gone, he is clearly back. And let's even talk about this. There were times over the last two seasons, and especially last year, where Tank was having a hard time getting things going for him. That Jarquez kind of stole the spotlight, a light, a, a, the spotlight a lot from him, and um, I'm just excited for this guy's opportunity to really, truly take that spotlight this year and what he can potentially accomplish at Auburn. I will address because I know that you are going to get asked about it here on your channel the controversy that has surrounded him in this off season. I get asked about it several times a week sometimes days about what's happening with that just for background information. There was a controversy on Twitter or something that he may have been involved in with some other players. Nothing has come out from the university about that. There's no reason to expect that any time would be missed by him, but you could understand if anything of it was true that he might miss some time in the first game or things like that. So I would just say Auburn fans, hold on for a second. Just wait for the university to announce something. If anything is going to be announced and just plan on him being your starting running back at this point. And then, Kyle, in regards to any number two, number three guys that will be counted upon for meaningful carries. Yes, absolutely. And I think this is another reason Auburn fans should feel great about the running back position, because even if something were to happen with Jark West Hunter in that situation, you've got a crop of guys there that are ready and are very exciting players to watch. Damari Alston, Limited time last year, but showed some true flashes of being a dynamic guy. This may not be an accurate representation for a lot of Auburn fans, but I always thought he reminded me of Sean Shires, who I called the human bowling ball. A shorter guy, a little bit more stout, and just was a really unique running back, and I have a lot of high hopes for him. You look at Brian Body, who is the transfer coming in from South Florida. Speed is his game, and even Hugh Freeze during media day said he kind of underestimated him a little bit and didn't think of him as a between-the-tackles guys, but the report from Coach Freeze himself was that he was being impressive the way he's as a between the tackles type of guy. So that should impress you as well. There's Jeremiah Cobb, the big recruit in the running back position from the 2023 class who's on campus, campus now. Obviously, you probably won't see him. And if you do, maybe that means there is an injury or something else going on. But that's a guy that seems to be ready and poised to uh, come onto the college stage and uh, be very dynamic as he was in high school. So you know, there's others as well, but those are the four ones right off the top that Auburn fans should be very excited about. Talking Auburn offense, we got Kyle Loomis on the line, E2C Network, breaking down the Tigers. We are just a few days away from fall camp. Wide receiver position, Shane Hooks, uh, Jair Shorter, a couple of the guys that uh, have showed up on campus uh, through the transfer portal that should be counted upon. And uh, your thoughts about a revamped wide receiver core. Yeah, that's really the storyline of this wide receiver core, the old guard and the new guard. And honestly, we'll talk about the new guard first. You mentioned some of those names, Shane Hooks, Jair Shorter, Nick Mardner, uh, who came in early on in the transfer portal cycle. What Hugh Freeze is known for is his big, lengthy wide receiver options for his quarterbacks and his offense. And obviously, that's what he went out and got with a lot of these guys. And some with a lot of versatility, too. Some proven guys with some, obviously, experience. A lot, those ones that you mentioned, uh, the majority of those are going to be seniors. They're going to be uh, not around for a long time. They're transfer. Uh, I think one of them maybe even a graduate. But um, excited to watch them in one season at Auburn. Gives us a lot more options than maybe we had. The old guard. Names that you are going to be very familiar with if you're an Auburn fan. You've got Coy Moore, Camden Brown, Javarius Johnson. The big question is which one of these guys is going to step up? Which one of these guys is going to be able to show that the time that they've spent here at Auburn and what they've been kind of building and waiting towards the opportunity they've had, they're going to be able to seize this moment. J uh, Javarius Johnson looks like that at times, and I believe that he could do that this year especially when you've got some of these bigger transfers that have been brought in that are a different type of wide receiver maybe, 
Javaris Johnson would be the familiar name to watch for at the wide receiver core. And his stat line certainly underlines what you just said. 26 catches, three touchdowns, 19 yards per reception. You don't see that figure very often. So that pops out as a guy that can get downfield and make some rather big plays. Uh, the tight end position, who can we count on there? Well, I'm excited about this tight end group. And I think most people would say, well, duh, Kyle, because you're thinking of Rivaldo Fairweather, the Florida international transfer. And you should be excited about him in terms of big targets that are able to be dynamic pass catchers. But I'm also excited about it because of the guys that are still here that have seen now two transitions for the Auburn football program. Those names are people like Luke Deal, also um, Brandon Frazier, and even Tyler Fromm, that should be a familiar name for college football fans, uh, being the brother of the Fromm from Georgia. Now, listen, they have probably not had the most prolific careers here, but what they are are leaders on the field and off the field. Luke Deal was even a representative of SEC Media Days, and I think that not only are they going to get an opportunity to shine this year in a new offense that typically uses wide, uh, wide receivers, yes, but tight ends a little bit more than we're used to, uh, but don't forget about those. But it's hard to ignore Rivaldo Fairweather and some of the numbers that he had there. And I think that's what most Auburn fans' minds shift to now is how is he going to be utilized in this passing game, this new dynamic passing game that we're not used to from the last couple of years. That should be very exciting for Auburn. And then, Kyle, the offensive line. Of course, we've got uh, Jeremiah Wright, who you mentioned to me before we started to record, is a guy that – uh, people are excited about his continuing development and him being possibly a better player than what was first anticipated. There are 92 starts coming back to this offensive line, so there is a, a semblance of experience there yes. to, to rely on. There is. There are guys left over, but this is a complete changeover, and Auburn fans are well aware of that, that one of the biggest limitations of the past couple seasons has been the offensive line play. And that's not a commentary on one single individual, uh, one player. It is simply a commentary that for whatever reason, for the last four or five years as a group, they just couldn't get it done for the most part. There were improvements in some areas, maybe pass blocking at times, but uh, most of those guys are now moved off and have other opportunities elsewhere. What you talk about now are guys like you mentioned, Jeremiah Wright, who are left over, Cameron Stutz, who was an SEC Media Day representative for Auburn, and you've got several others uh, there as well that will get their opportunities to compete here. But really, it's the new guys that you're looking at and that you're excited about because, frankly, it's just because it's new and fresh. We've needed something fresh at the offensive line, and you know a lot of those guys are not going to have a lot of longevity here at Auburn because they are upperclassmen, and there are some new guys coming in too. But I'll throw names at you like Dylan Wade, Avery Jones, uh, Gunnar Brenton, Isavian Miller. Those are people to be watching alongside some of those familiar names like Jeremiah Wright, who've been here, who've done their time, who have earned uh, you know Auburn's respect for making it through what's been a very rough few years with the offensive line. It's still a lot of questions, though. We don't know how this new shift is going to work. The main thing is we've got to get the running game going to have uh, the ability to pass this ball a lot better than we have in the past few years. And my hope and belief is that with some fresh faces, we can do that. The Auburn Tigers trying to get back to postseason play in Hugh Freeze's first season. Kyle Loomis, e to c Network. It's right here on YouTube, and it's everything Auburn that you can imagine. Give it a look. E2C Network right here on YouTube. Kyle, we appreciate you stopping by. Of course, we will attack the defense next, next time we get together. Thank you so much for having me as always.